times a second. You know, we don't know how fast the wind we are. That's pretty fast for a person. But you know that electric current I was talking about, Carol, in that wire? It actually goes back and forth 60 times a second. You think you could go back and forth 60 times a second? <laughs> so the point is, that sounds pretty fast, doesn't it? But for an electric current, it's actually kind of slow. You can make it go back and forth much, much faster than that. And when you do that, new things start to happen. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to need your help with one more thing. It involves that machine there. You see it, Carol, the one that's right there in the corner? It's called a Tesla boy. And while it does a lot of different things, one of the most important things it does is it takes an alternating current that goes back and forth 50 times a second and makes it go back and forth thousands of times a second. And when that happens, all sorts of interesting new things occur, like that. If you look at the top of the machine, you can see there's that little dancing spark up there. Now, when you toaster muffins in your toaster, does it ever make a dancing spark on the top? It shouldn't. It does get fixed. They're not supposed to do that. And the reason is that you have to make the current go back and forth much faster than this kind of that. Now, that's very cool, but to be honest with you, there's something else happening that I think is even cooler than that. But we can't see it, and that's why you need carry salt one more time. So I'm going to just stand right up here, facing towards the machine. Now, Carol's going to need to hold something that can sort of turn what we can't see into something we can see. It's actually just an ordinary light bulb. We're just having some blue plastic that looks pretty. So, hold it with two hands to so. And I'm just going to lift it a little higher. You can hold it. Yeah, just come over there. You go. I just want to see above your head. Perfect. Stand just like that. Now, let me come over here where it's safe. I mean, where the buttons are. I'm going to turn on the machine again. And let me show you that other thing that changes in kind of a special way when we make the current go back four faster. Ooh. Well, for all we know, Carrie does that to play holes every day, so let's just double check. Uh, 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 let's try something else. Carrie, can you see it? Nice what I want you to try to do is turn and circle through my holes. Turn, 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 in addition to making the dancing spark, some of the energy in that current is turned to radio waves. They burst out in every direction, and those radio waves can enter the light bulb, and the light bulb can use some of that energy in place of being fed electric current by the water. Um, now, as you can see, when power moves away from it, can you walk back a few steps? It goes out, just like for a reason that a radio station gets kind of barred when you drive away, and of course, it's something against the waves, which those radio waves. It's just that. But you get the point. Simply by changing how quickly the current goes back and forth in that machine, we get these really cool effects that we could not have demonstrated without Carol. So, Carol, thank you so much for your big round of applause. Thank you. Now, this is one way you can change an electric current. You can change it its direction, and you can do that slowly or quickly. If you do it faster, you get no effects. But there's one thing you may have noticed that never changed about the spark being made by your Tesla coil. Did you notice it's always the same sound? Low pitch buzz, kind of like the electric radio shark, that we did not do so. <laughs> now, the reason it's making the sound at all is kind of cool. That spark looks like it's on all the time, and it's actually turning on and off so fast your eyes can't see it. They can't tell when it's off. It's turning off specifically 120 times a second. And the reason it makes the sound is because every time it turns on, it does heat the air. No, that's why it's not the um, So when the air gets hot, it shakes a little bit more than usual. That has the sound going through the air you can hear. Basically, when it turns on, it takes heat. When it turns off, it pulls down. When it turns on, it heat. When it turns off, it pulls down. And that's basically what creates what we call a 120 cycle sound, a low frequency sound. Now, if we can turn the Tesla coil on and off more quickly, we can make a different sound. And uh, so what happens? We can't do that with this machine. We've got all kinds of distance here in the theater. So I want to explain how this works. We're also going to give you a sense of what's happening on. So for this, I need one more volunteer who's feeling super energetic. So you join me? Come on. I thought this was a better one for you, so you don't have to dance much. What was your name? Lauren, nice to meet you. Now, Lauren, you're going to do something else a little bit less for me, because I want them to understand how, how quickly the change happens affects the pitch of the sound we hear. So rather than doing it with heat, we're going to do it with kinetic energy. We need something that is, you probably haven't played with for at least a few years. Uh, I think this one's working. Oh, yeah, she's an expert, okay? These are kind of like, these are rough shapes, so I kind of feel like grab that right there and get a shot, okay? And how do you use it? What do you do? You do, it's good. Perfect. You <laughs> As she swims it, it makes a sound because it's drawing air through the tube, which bangs into the ridges. So it's kinetic energy. It's the vibration of sending in the air that makes the shit. Watch this. Slow down. When she does it slower, the air gets drawn through, but it doesn't hit the ridges as far. It makes a lower pitch sound. The reason it's doing specific notes is because of a concept called resonance, which is actually related to how the test coil uh, works. But the point is, she does it slowly, a little bit sound. That's a sound. So again, whether you're doing it with kinetic energy or heat, there's a, it, there's a relationship between the pitch of the sound and how slow it really do something. Now, stop with that, but I need your help with one more thing as well. Uh, because we have many Tesla coils in the theater of electricity. You can come under here where we are. Including some cylinder inside the enclosure. Now, if you've got a brick of a 
right? So you can see these a little bit better. They're the giant ones that have the big donuts on the top. And I'll also change the camera here so you can uh, see that a little rise. Okay? Now, in addition to being bigger and more powerful, those custom ones can turn on and off as often as we want them to. And the way we do that is with a, a fair amount of unexpected kind of control. We use an Xbox and hardware if you want. <laughs> so the, more, the reason I ask you to say is because, frankly, I have absolutely no useful talent whatsoever. So if you can help me at least test the machines. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. Pop these on. This is real loud and close. Um, now, when, once I turn it on, I want you to basically send a few notes to it. I don't really care which ones you do, but do at least one low one, one medium one, or one high one, whichever you feel. Hold them for a couple seconds. We'll see if it's working and it's making different pitch notes. Sound good? Okay, so I'm going to bring out the lights on us again so she can, uh, so we can see the sparks a little better. It'll just need a few seconds to warm up. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see if I can light this over. Show this particular show that always bothers me a little bit because I can't prove it. But I solidly promise. 
promise you that every single lightning bolt I've made in the show so far has been going down from the machine to the ground. And in fact, this actually mirrors natural lightning. Most of the natural lightning we experience, that's not actually happening inside the cloud, is going from the cloud down to the earth. Now, don't feel bad if you honestly thought you saw it. And again, our senses are so easy to be fooled. And in fact, not just our senses. When scientists first started to develop cameras that were fast enough to sort of uh, visualize the, uh, how a lightning bolt happened, they saw films of light that started the Earth that went up to the clouds. And for that reason, they started calling these lightning bolts return strokes. When they developed faster cameras, they figured out that was an illusion, that the current is still going down, the electrons are still going down. So if you want to explore this for yourself, and you don't quite believe it, that's okay in science. We have a wonderful exhibit, exhibit area in the basement that's all about uh, the senses uh, and how to explore them. Some of them are seeing. By the way, the walls just came out. I'm sorry, you can't watch the show from the steps. So you can either come on down to my level or back up. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, um, I encourage you to explore this. You don't have to take my word for it. But based on decades and decades of experimentation, it's definitely proven the eye just isn't sense enough to see how fast the lightning bolt uh, go back and forth. It's also not sensitive enough to really catch accurately how fast it turns on and off, but it's in the billions of a second. Those lightning bolts turn on and off almost instantly. And because of that, that allows for a rather remarkable effect to happen that combined with the metal of bar is what keeps you safe if it's a bright light. It's called the skin effect. Now, in order to demonstrate it, the first thing I need to do is get a different one. You can actually just press the bar. Well, I'm going to press the big red one. That's, that's, that's okay. Um, but to test the skin effect idea, I'm going to do two things. I'm not only going to try to explain a little bit more about how it works, but I'm also going to give you that proof that I promised you at the beginning of the show that the metal is more important than the normal cars. And to do this, I'm going to come inside this enclosure, inside this big cage, and I'm going to raise it up in the air. I'll explain more about what you're going to have to ask you about it. Probably figure it out yourself. But the first thing I want to tell you a little bit about what goes on with the skin effect, why this rapid change is so important. And it's trying to describe it in a way that's simple and accurate. This is the best analogy I've come up with over the years. Uh, but it's something I think some of you might be able to remember quite intimately. How many of you have played with somebody on a swing set recently? Like, we're swing. Yeah, but we got one on the side before. Great fun. We're all swing around. But if you played on a swing recently, you might remember that you kind of have to do it with a certain amount of time. In other words, if you're pushing somebody on a swing and you want them to go higher and faster, you have to push them. Just get back to you and start to move away. You keep doing it at the right time. You can go higher and faster. If you do it at the wrong time, you slow it down and stop it. I like this analogy because the brain is a little bit like what goes off the skin. When a lightning bolt, whether it's artificial or natural, turns on and off really fast, it actually creates additional electric currents in whatever it's hitting. Now, they're called empty currents, but they're called that because they go in circles. So if you were to imagine for a moment, say, a lightning bolt hitting this metal cage that I'm standing in, what basically happens is that as the lightning turns on and off, it creates any currents that are turning in opposite directions and opposite sides of the cage. And the net result of this is that it's like it reinforces the current flowing on the outside of the metal, whereas it resists or fights against the current coming up the ins going down the inside of the metal. Again, this is an analogy. It's not 100 percent accurate, but it gives you a sense of why that rapid change is so important. Because if it didn't create any currents, this wouldn't work as successfully. Now, as I promised, I'm not only going to show you that this works, but also prove to you that the metal is more important than the rubber. Because you should be able to tell this cage is made of metal, but clearly it has rubber tires. So we're going to now get the cage with lightning to see if this works. And if not, maybe I'll carry the cat will finish the show. Okay, lightning approximately three, two, one.
Sorry, folks. Now, so what I'm going to do is we're going to fire a 